Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all to the 53rd Annual Commencement Exercises held at Blackstone Millville Regional High School for the class of 2023. I am Jenna Nimzik, the class president, and I thank you all for coming out to celebrate with us tonight. At this time, please stand if you are able and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, the national anthem will be performed by our classmate, Rory Haggerty. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so bright gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Good evening, everyone. We should have known this would probably happen after only half of us made it to the school trip on time, right? We should have known we were pivoting. That's okay. We're good. At least you're not in Western Mass, right? Uh, welcome to all of our family and friends, our staff, our school committee, our town representatives, loved ones. Dr. DeFalco, Mr. Juchar, I'm Jill Fowles. I am the very proud principal of this high school, and I thank you for the opportunity of addressing the class of 23 one final time. And this is really annoying because I practice with them in front of me, and now I have to figure out how to do this. All right. Hi, guys. So I have to be honest. I struggled writing this speech. I sat there for probably a half a dozen times trying to figure out how I was gonna compose this. And it wasn't because I didn't have anything to say, it was that I had too much to say and not enough time. How is it that we are here and you're about to graduate? I personally would love to go back to the first day of school and our lip sync battle, but I don't think we're going to be able to do this. But if I could do this year over again, I would. 
And I think there are probably a few parents out there who are sitting in disbelief that somehow we are celebrating your graduation this evening. But as much as I want to keep them, just a little bit longer, you are so ready for your next chapter. And I can't prevent this anymore. So I want you to all note that I am not crying. <laughs> this is their goal. And I'm not crying because I don't love you and think that you are absolutely the best graduating class of 2023. I'm not crying because I am filled with so much pride in each and every one of you. I look forward with great curiosity to the humans that you will become after you receive your diploma. And that diploma means different things for different people. For some of you, it means college, two year, four year, close, far away. For some, it means the workforce and never ever having to sit in a classroom again. And for a few of you, you've made the honorable responsibility to protect our great nation. But as excited as I am, I also worry not worry, worry, but mom worry. You know, that irrational fear that moms have when we really just want to keep you in your room and protect you from everything bad that potentially could happen. Right, moms? Right? Uh, that's what I would like to do. And I thought, maybe I could just fail everybody. <laughs> but then Dr. DeFalco told me no. So. I'm leaving you with three pieces of wisdom that I hope that you will revisit because it comes from the bottom of my heart. So one, share your talents with others. This may be as simple as a smile or a kind word. Too many people in this world are struggling and that smile may be the best thing that brightens their day. Share those smiles often. If you're sitting here thinking, I don't have any talents, just ask any of your teachers and they will set you straight. This class has so much collective talent. You possess beautiful artistic vision, mechanical expertise, culinary creativity, thank you, athletic strength, gifted musical abilities, and that includes our spontaneous rapper, the power to make people laugh, and the blessing of being a compassionate friend. Give often of these talents so that you can allow others to shine as well. Don't hide your light. Don't let anybody let that light fade. Be the beacon that we need, because we need you. Two, leaders don't need a title. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. I believe this is to be true and wish I actually said this, but it is credited to President John Quincy Adams. Leadership is strong at BMR, specifically with this class of 2023. I've seen leaders emerge in the typical places, on the sports fields, in the classroom, as class and club officers. But I've also seen leaders emerge when you're reading a story at the elementary school or interning at a business. When you advocate for yourself by putting your needs first, even if that means saying no, that makes you a leader. If you don't see yourself as a leader, Believe me, you are, particularly in the way you show up every day. Be brave and sometimes even fearless. If you've never ridden a roller coaster before, sit in the front row and enjoy the ride. Leaders do that, and they bring people with them along that ride, helping at each step. And finally, and most importantly, 
remember that you are loved by so many. If at any moment you forget that, please remember this week and how we celebrated you, all of us, this community came together to celebrate you. Think of those elementary school kids screaming for you. Think of the pictures from the slideshow and those awkward middle school years that clearly you survived. At such a young age, you have made an impact on the lives of your family, your friends, your teachers, your community, and me. You are loved, not because, stop. You are loved, not because of what you have or haven't done. You are loved simply because you're you. Be that charger for life. And if you need us, we're always here. Congratulations, class of 2023. I believe in you. Good luck. I now welcome our valedictorian, Miss Tori Gervais. Good evening, Dr. DeFalco, Mrs. Fowlis, Mr. Ducharme, school committee, teachers, family, friends and of course, the class of 2023. It is my pleasure to stand before you tonight and have the ability to personally congratulate you all. We're here together today recognizing and reminiscing on the hard work we have each put into the last 12 years. But really, it's the future that can be celebrated. Many of us have spent the last 12 years together from kindergarten until now. But from this point forward, we're ready to go our separate ways. It's nerve wracking to think that the people you have spent nearly every day with will suddenly no longer be there. This challenge, though, is only the first of many that we're about to encounter. Whether we each choose to go to college, the workforce, or enter our own individual path, there will be challenges in your way, and the only person who can get around them is you. As we each enter our ever-changing society, it's imperative that you remember to face your challenges head on. It's not enough to simply try and get by, hoping that the issues will fix themselves. It won't move the world forward. While it can be difficult to see in the moment, with each challenge you face, with each act of courage, with each of your successes, you leave your mark on the world. Your individual successes benefit society as a whole because when you succeed, you lighten the burden of those around you. When you succeed, you are in the position to give rather than take. You may not have the ability to give your successes and inspire the whole world, but even having the ability to help one can make the world of a difference. Now, what do you want to be when you grow up? This silly question that we've all been asked so many times holds much more meaning now than it did when we were younger. As children, many of us, like myself, would respond with ambitious, outgoing answers. I'll be the President of the United States, of course, was one of my naive and common answers. But as time goes on and we become more mature, with a better grasp of reality, our responses to this question transform. If I were to ask each of you the same question now, it's likely that many of you would respond with going to college, joining the workforce, or simply answering, I have no idea, which despite what you might think, is totally normal. But these answers don't actually answer the question of what do you want to be when you grow up. Really, they answer the question of what do you want to do when you grow up. The difference between being and doing is huge in the grand scheme of things. The words being and doing are often used interchangeably when really the two are so contrasting. Doing is taking action, while being dives deeper into having awareness and attentiveness within such actions. You might be thinking that the slight difference between the two is irrelevant, but outside of the school and in the real world, it means everything. Who you choose to be is far greater than what you choose to do. No matter the individual path we each choose to pursue, there will be adversity along the way, involving many of the similar challenges we faced the last 12 years. Exhaustion, testing, pressure, 
In those times, I, like many of you, found myself focusing on the do rather than the be. Thinking of what I have to do to make myself study more, what I have to do that night for homework, what I have to do to nail my next audition, or what I have to do to fit in. This way of thinking and acting makes us lose sight of any greater goal. In these moments, what we need to do is stop and reflect on what we truly value. For through such reflection, we can relish in the feeling of gratification for the hard work we have applied. To be is much more fulfilling than to do. To be enough for yourself and those around you. To be kind to those you encounter. To be polite in unknown situations. And to be grateful for those who sacrifice everything for you. Over the past few years in this school, I have grown from a young freshman that thought her life was about doing to a now almost graduate that focuses on being. The school has given me the wonderful opportunity for such growth, but it is those around me who have made such a difference in my development. If it weren't for my friends and teachers supporting me, I never would have learned the virtues of patience and dedication. Every teacher I've had the pleasure of learning from has inspired me to push my own limits, but if it weren't for Mr. Schaefer, I would not be here today. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer, for your support and guidance, both musically and personally. You've changed my life forever. <laughs> to my family, I love you all so much and thank you immensely for everything. To Ellie and Nathan, you have both shown me what it truly means to live, to be unaffected in the midst of others' opinions. Haley, you are my biggest inspiration. I have and will always try to live up to your excellence. You are my biggest role model and the smartest person I know, maybe even more than me. Thank you for never letting me down. You will always be my best friend. To my parents, you are both the most selfless people I know. You have given up your lives in order to make mine and my siblings' lives nothing short of extraordinary. Thank you for doing everything in your power to make my dreams come true. Dad, you are my hero and Mom, my inspiration. Thank you both for everything. While you all prepare to embark on your new journey, I implore you to remember what it means to be. Remember that life isn't always about the doing and working yourself to exhaustion. Take some time to just be in the moment because it will go away in the blink of an eye. Thank you and congratulations again to the class of 2023. I would now like to welcome our salutatorian, Miss Maddie Godet. Welcome again, parents, grandparents, relatives, friends, teachers, administrators, and most importantly, my fellow graduates of the class of 2023. I'm honored to be able to be here and speak to you all today. I know I speak for the entire class of 2023 when I say thank you to all of you for being here this evening. Each of you have played an essential role in our journey to this moment, and we recognize the importance of you all being here. There is no one else we'd want to share this special day with. Before I continue, I would like to thank a few specific people. To start, a huge thank you to my family. To my mom, dad, Izzy, Braden, grandparents, and more, I would not be the person I am today without you all. Thank you for helping me become the best version of myself. To my coaches, especially Coach Breen, Coach Sully, and Coach John Truscott, thank you for helping me become a better athlete and a better person. I learned countless lessons and made many memories in my soccer and basketball careers with you all. The memories that I've made with you and my countless teammates are ones that will stick with me my entire life. To Miss Brienzi, Thank you for helping me through everything. From college applications to personal struggles, you are always there to help me with whatever I needed. To my teachers, thank you for always pushing me to be the best that I can be and believing in me. To my friends, new and old, thank you for being there for me no matter what, and thank you for the lessons that your friendships have taught me. I would not be where I am, nor who I am today, without you all being there for me every step of the way. Thank you all. To the class of 2023, we made it. Just over a decade ago, we started our journey together. We stepped into our first classroom in elementary school. For some, it may feel like just yesterday, while for others, it may feel like a lifetime ago that we stepped off those bright yellow buses and saw each other's smiling faces for the first time. We couldn't wait to get outside to recess and push each other on the tire swings. The year 2023 seemed so, so far away. Countless spirit days like Mix It Up Day and Twin Day and shared inside jokes filled our elementary days. We couldn't wait to be in middle school, and before we knew it, elementary school had ended. We quickly found ourselves immersed in a new setting. Middle school was a period of change in every aspect. 
our lives were changing just as quickly as we were growing up. The friendships we made, knowledge we gained, and lessons we learned truly formed us as individuals. From the annual dodgeball tournament to the trip to Washington, D.C., we made memories that will last a lifetime. The farewell dance at the end of eighth grade really marked the end of middle school. As we found ourselves continuing to grow up, we still couldn't wait to be in high school. We couldn't wait to be able to drive around with our friends and be whoever we wanted to be. Finally, we made it to high school, the place we always wished to be. We couldn't wait for the bell to ring at the beginning and end of every day. Our high school experience was filled with many ups and downs, successes and failures, and wins and losses. We spent countless nights cheering our friends on at varsity sports games and band shows. Coming from an athlete's perspective, playing the game I loved with the people I loved cheering me on was the best part of high school. Countless events shaped our high school experience. As freshmen, we couldn't wait for our first pep rally, even though we always knew that our senior pep rally would be the best. We persevered through the hardships of COVID, social distancing, online learning, and much more. Not one of us expected a big part of our high school experience to be filled with things like learning chemistry from home or filling a journal with a list of activities we completed for gym class. Even when we were able to return to school, it still wasn't what we had hoped for yet. While this may have not been what any of us expected when we began freshman year, we were still lucky enough to have our first normal year of high school be our senior year. No matter what though, we were always there for each other. We would spend hours talking about how we couldn't wait for graduation and being able to go off on our next adventures. We couldn't wait to explore the world outside of here. But yet, here we are, reminiscing about all the memories we've made together. We couldn't wait to grow up, and now we find ourselves thinking back on the past. However, this isn't the end of our journey together, just the start of a new one. I can't wait to see where life will take all of us next. Throughout these past 13 years, what we didn't realize was just how fast we were growing up. It's amazing to see how much we have changed and truly grown up since the days when our biggest worry was what we would play at recess. I guess it really is true when they say that the days move slow, but the years move fast. It used to be years, then months, then weeks, and then days until we reached this moment. But here we are. To the class of 2023, we made it. Thank you. For the presentation of diplomas, please welcome our superintendent, Dr. Jason DeFalco, our principal, Mrs. Jill Fallis, and our assistant principal, Mr. Keith Ducharme. All right, just a few things before we begin. First of all, to all of you, uh, thank you for putting up with the rookie meteorologist the last couple days. The change of time, the change of venues. Um, it's great to see this many people show up and sweat to celebrate this great group. So thank you for your cooperation. Also, just so you know, we are going to uh, extend this a little bit so we have some great video, uh, shots for you folks to be able to take pictures. But more importantly, for these kids behind me because they're nervous as heck because we practice everything outside. So we're gonna, I'm going to walk you through how things are going to go before we begin. Dr. DeFalco will be at the 2023 sign. He'll be issuing the diplomas. The students will then hug Ms. Ms. Follis as usual, and they'll either slap me in the head or rub my bald head like a tradition. <laughs> then they're going to exit. They're going to go against the left-hand wall, across the middle, all the way across to Ms. Pilligalarani over there, I Jill. They're going to come back down that aisle and back up this, onto the stage, back to their seats. So everyone gets a chance to see him, wave, congratulate him and they get to walk a little bit, so that's good. You guys feel comfortable with that? All right? All right. Then let's go now, the moment we were waiting for. Just the first row, just the first row. See, they, they thought learning was done last week, so we gotta figure this one out. First row stands, thank you. Excellent. Tori Paige Gervais. Valedictorian, class vice president, national honor society president, high honors.
Cry Am Secretary. Presenting to her daughter, Madison Green Gordette, Salutatorian, National Honor Society, High Honors. Jenna Elizabeth Nimzik, class president, NHS High Honors. <laughs> Madison Kathleen Bisbee, class secretary, National Honor Society historian, service hour coordinator, High Honors. Mackenzie. Mackenzie. I should put my glasses back on. You have one job. <laughs> uh, Mackenzie, you can always come back and take mine because you did a good job at Senior Parade. <laughs> and presenting to her daughter from the school committee, Amanda Kathleen Bonacco, Class Public Relations, National Honor Society, High Honors, Tri Am Vice President. Elijah Gloria Ryan, class historian, National Honor Society, high honors. Emily Ann Healy, class treasurer, National Honor Society, high honors, Tri Am treasurer. Just going to pause a second to let the first row get back. You can you can chat for clap for them again. Our next graduate, Anthony Giro, high honors. Next graduate, Augustino Alexandropoulos. Yeah. Emily Bema, NHS High Honors. Bema! Leanne Baker, Honors Student Council. <laughs> Our 
Courtney Rose Barron, honors. Morgan May Bean. Just like your mother did back in the day. <laughs> Kaylee Rose Bell, National Honor Society Vice President, Food Pantry Coordinator, High Honors Student Council. <laughs> Paige Bigelow. Vanessa Biss. Caden <laughs> Boomhauer. Crystal Boulay, high honors. <laughs> Emma Claire Cadell, high honors. Braden Peter Carden. <laughs> Zaria Cardozo, honors. Reno W. Coretta, high honors. <laughs> Peter John Carrier, honors. <laughs> Pete, Prince, she can take that away. Jafet Castano. Michael Jordan. <laughs> Abigail Judith Camella Catherine Clifford. Natalia Zawanka, National Honor Society Treasurer, Tutti Coordinator, High Honors, Student Council, Triumph. <laughs> Destiny DeFonte, National Honor Society, High Honors. Rosa.
Nice shot, guy. Bella Del Vecchio. Joe Donovan. <laughs> Naomi Dornstadt. Get the guy behind the pool. Madison Drew, high honors. Andrew Dunnett Bolero. Travis Duquette. <laughs> oh, she's knocking off hats. I'm a hat killer. I can't. See you, Trav. Congratulations, buddy. Easy. <laughs> Eva Rose Favaro, National Law Society, High Honors, Tri-M. Andrew James Felice. Nate Riley Frazier. Sierra Lynn Grabowski, National Honor Society, High Honors, Triumph. Rory Elizabeth 
I'm sorry, Rory Ella Elizabeth Haggerty, National Law Society, High Honors, Triam. Okay. Ava Monroe Heeman. <laughs> Caitlin Marie Henshaw. Student Council. Best of luck. Paige Elizabeth Lafferty Honors. Salon Society, High Honors Student Council. Clay Jean LaFrancois. Congratulations, Clay. Give me. You got it. Zeke Linderman. Thank you. 
Hunter Davis Lockwood Letourneau, National Honor Society, High Honors, Tri Am President. Emma Rose Mele, National Honor Society, High Honors, Tri Am. Alexis Manna, Honors Student Council. Aaron Maka. Salon Society, high honors. Braden Alexander McCarthy, high honors. Molly Marie McEnany, National Art Society, high honors. Cam McKenna. I wish for a million dollars. <laughs> so do I. Deegan James Melville. Yeah. Money. Thank you. Felicia Membrino. Santino Millet. Montesinos.
I wasn't hit you, but I, I'm not. You can hit me. Good luck. Thank you. You too. Nicholas John Olson, High Honors Tri M Service Coordinator. Colby Thomas O'Neill, Honors. Aiden Martin Osborne. James Connor Perry. Hey, smooth. Smooth, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Vanessa Pease. Sarah Maria Poria, National Honor Society, High Honors Student Council. Bruce Roy. Doobie doos. <laughs> Kylie Jordan Sacco, National Honor Society, High Honors, Student Council President. Jake Santagate. <laughs> Jacob James Scapatici. Gavin Shunny. <laughs> Jack Garrett Stafford, honors. Loretta Maxine Tanuser. There you go. Megan Tomasi, High Honors Triam. Carter 
Beth Truscott, National Honor Society, high honors. Tamara Wanya, high honors. Lucy Ann Watson, honors. Molly Nevea Zalonis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the class of twenty three. Waiting on Molly, it's all right. How about a hand for Molly again? You waited the longest, you get the biggest ovation. It is my privilege to introduce the president of the class of 2023, Miss Jenna Nimzik. Good evening, Dr. DeValco, Mrs. Fowlis, Mr. Ducharme, the school committee, BMR faculty and staff, family, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2023. I've been told that this speech is supposed to overwhelm you with many emotions. I'm supposed to make you laugh, cry, or both. No pressure on me or anything. But I know my mom is already crying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start by giving you all some good laughs with a few of the best memories of our years together. During our junior year, the fire alarms went off almost a dozen times in one week. I guess those many trips outside weren't enough for some people. Because this year, James left some bacon on the stove a little too long in food for thought, which set off the fire alarms again. <laughs> a few months later, Joey did the same thing, this time making some mac and cheese. <laughs> when you all came in today, you probably noticed the stop sign at the end of the driveway. Well, you can all say thank you to Kyle for that one. Because at the beginning of this year, he decided to knock that down with his car. <laughs> There's been a few more driving incidents in this parking lot. Sierra's poor parking skills resulted in her hitting Maddie's car. Lucy gave my car what she called a little love tap, but didn't tell me until a few months later. <laughs> Rory also hit Tori's car in the parking lot and waited all day to tell her because she was scared. <laughs> One day this year, Molly had an upset stomach, but she didn't quite make it to the trash can in time. Shout out to Ms. Breen who held back Molly's hair and rubbed her back when she finally made it to the trash can. We all heard Sierra start singing at least 20 times a day. 99% of the time it was Taylor Swift. We remember Kenzie dressing up as Bernie Sanders, Bruce and Corson in their blow up costumes. We all saw Molly and Tino get married in third grade and then divorced in fifth grade. <laughs> 
we heard Rory speak in about 17 different accents and listened to Tra Travis rap about roaming through Wyoming. We saw Jack eat a steak with his bare hands at 9 a.m. in English class. And we just saw Nate walk up here with a chicken wing in his hand. We spent way too long on the bus going to Six Flags. Thank you to the bus driver who missed the exit. That was great. We even spent many days talking to each other through a screen instead of in the classroom. We have truly been through it all together. Over the past 13 years, we have grown up together. For many of us, we wish the days would go by faster. We'd wait impatiently for the clock to hit 202, eager to go home each day. Most of us couldn't wait for June to finally roll around. During the summer, you'd hang out with your close friends, but you would never hang out with your in-school friends. Like the funny kid in the math, back of your math class that you only talk to every once in a while. Or the nice girl you pass in the hallway that you always say hi to. We then all returned late August or early September to see those faces of our in-school friends we didn't see over the months off. It's over these few months you realized you miss seeing those faces every day. Each September, coming back to school felt like a safe space. BMR was our home. This time, however, it's different. After tonight, all 97 of us may never be at the same place at the same time again. We won't be coming back to the same place at the same time to see the same faces we have for the past four years. Next September, some of us will be in the military, some will be entering the workforce, some will be going down the East Coast or across the country to college, but the majority of us will be attending college somewhere in Worcester. <laughs> Maybe Ms. Costa and Mrs. Conti will meet us for lunch one day. <laughs> 50 years ago on this exact day, my grandparents walked across this stage to receive their diplomas. <laughs> the halls of BMR are filled with over half a century of memories, and the ones we have made here over the past four years will never be forgotten. I'm lucky enough to stand before you all today and congratulate the class of 2023. I'm also able to give a few thank yous to the people in my life who have helped me get to the point I'm at today. But before I do, on behalf of the class of 2023, I want to thank our parents and guardians for everything you have done for us. We all worked so hard to get to this point, but we wouldn't have been able to do it without your love and support every step of the way. To our amazing teachers, thank you for believing in us, guiding us, and pushing us to be the best versions of ourselves. I truly believe that the BMR staff is like no other. Thank you. <laughs> to my mom, my role model, my dad, my hero, and my sister, my best friend, I love you all so much. Thank you for always being my biggest fans. <laughs> Mr. Durand, Mrs. Conti, Mr. Diletto, Ms. Costa, Ms. Kelly, Mrs. Roberge, Mr. Yugo, Mrs. Ducharme, Mr. Ducharme, Mrs. Fallis, and Sully, I have learned so much from all of you over the past four years, and you've all had a huge impact on my life. Of course, I have to give a huge shout out to Uncle Joe, our favorite BMR staff member. <laughs> Ms. Breen and Ms. Pellin were the best advisors I could have asked for. They were always there when I was stressed about something, which was always. I would text them at midnight worrying about prom decorations or Mr. BMR signups or graduation rehearsal, and I'm not exaggerating when I say they would always respond saying they were already thinking about the same things. They made my job as president 10 times easier, so could the two of you please stand and be recognized. I could stand here all day saying thank yous, but my final thank you goes to my other officers, Tori, Emily, Mackenzie, Amanda, and Elijah, who are sitting up here with me. To Haley Ducharme and the rest of the class of 2024, please listen up. Your senior year will fly by. Please enjoy every moment of it. I promise one day you will wish the clock would stop at 2.01 so you could stay here just a little bit longer. You might not believe me now, but on your graduation day, I'll be happy to call you up and say I told you so. 
Congratulations to the class of 2023. We made it. There is not an ounce of doubt in me that you will all do great things. I'm excited to see what all of you accomplish in the future. I will never forget any of you, and I will always remember the memories we made here together. Thank you. At this time, I invite you all to move your tassels from the right to the left. As we exit the stage, you're all welcome to meet us under A Wing in the cafeteria or in the gym to take pictures. I also encourage you to grab a copy of the Pony Express, which is our school newspaper, which has been updated throughout the night. Thank you all. Yeah. 